Hey guys, it's Celia H. Deer, and welcome to Banjo-Kazooie. This game was a very big part of my childhood, and just a blast to play. There are a lot of glitches in this game too, some being useful, and some that are just fun to do. So in this episode of Game Breakers, we're going to look at glitches within Banjo-Kazooie. In each world of Banjo-Kazooie, there are five Jinjos scattered around. In Mumbo's Mountain, collect four of them, saving the blue one for last. As soon as you collect it, a Jiggy will pop out, and that's what we'll be using for the glitch. Jump over to the little island he's standing on, and as the Jiggy flies up, run and jump at it. If you timed it correctly, Banjo will land in the water with the Jiggy still in his hand. You can now swim around in this patch of water with it still being in Banjo's hand. Once you're done messing around with this, hop out of the water to collect it without having Banjo do the Jiggy Jig dance. If you still want to witness it, just swim to the land here and enjoy. Another way to skip a Jiggy Jig is by getting hit as you collect certain ones. For example, on Mumbo's Mountain, collect all the other Jinjos except the green one. Break the huts until it pops out and collect it. A Jiggy will spawn and you now need to lure a Grublin over to it. Once it's standing over top of the Jiggy, run into it. You'll collect it and get knocked back at the same time, cancelling the animation. Over in Treasure Trove Cove, Leaky the Bucket needs your help to drain the water. Bounce three eggs his way and quickly run off the ledge and into the water. Mash B so Kazooie comes out to help swim. If you do all this fast enough, Leaky's cutscene will trigger while you're underwater like this. When the water is drained, Banjo will still be at the skewed angle like he was in the water. Walking normally will cancel this state, so hop around to keep the glitch active. Whenever you leave through an exit pad, you'll notice that Banjo becomes see-through before fading out. In Bubble Gloop Swamp, pick up the Silt Stride Boots and run over to the exit pad. Just before the ability wears off, step on the pad. Instead of getting warped out, the animation for the power-up ending will interrupt the warp. Doing this allows you to play as this strange translucent banjo. You can do everything normally, however the portal sound effect repeatedly loops creating an awful noise. This glitch prevents you from leaving through the exit pad now, but simply entering a new area in the swamp or dying will fix this state. Still in Bubble Gloop Swamp, you normally need to have Mumbo transform you into a crocodile to reach this pink Jinjo. However, it's actually really easy to grab it without having to. By simply jumping down and rolling at it, you can collect it, or if you don't feel like taking any damage, go above it on the platform and do a beat bust to move onto it. Moving on, there are two glitches that allow you to skip hitting witch switches. Up first is Bubble Gloop Swamp Switch. Hitting the switch would allow you to enter the vase in the hub world for Gobi's Valley and into the caged off area with the Jiggy. So in the room with the Grunty statue, use the Shock Spring Pad, aim your jump at the statue, and Feathery Flap towards the hand. You should now be on the arm of it, so make your way behind her head. Go into a talent trot while standing on the pink panel here and jump at the back of her neck. This jump is pretty precise and took me a decent number of attempts. Once you clip through, you'll fall into the caged area like normal. The Witch Switch in Gobi Valley will open the tomb containing a Jiggy, however the Jiggy is already loaded inside. Break open the side room and activate the Spring Jump Pad. Use it to land onto the tomb and roll into. If you roll in just the right spot, you'll grab the Jiggy through the tomb and earlier than you were supposed to. In Gobi's Valley, there's a way to enter Jinxy early. Instead of firing eggs into his nose, head over to this platform on the left side of him. Jump off and perform a beak barge at this line in the wall. You'll clip inside of him but still be taking damage, so quickly maneuver to the front where the loading zone is before dying. Now you're inside, so grab the Jiggy and head out. Up next is a glitch that takes place in one of my favorite worlds, Freeze Easy Peak. In one section of the level, you need to escort Twinklies to their tree without getting eaten by the munchers. However, there's a lot easier way of doing it. As the timer starts, take out the first muncher, then hop inside the present. No more munchers will spawn as long as you're in here, so the Twinklies will have a safe route to complete the mission. My guess is because you're not close enough to load any of the other munchers, similar to how enemies do not move if you're too far away with them. Their animations play, but they don't walk around. In Mad Monster Mansion, there's a fence surrounding the level. Well, there's a way to get over this and out of bounds. Go up to the roof of the mansion and begin a talent trot. Run towards this side of the roof, jump off, and rat a tat rap shortly after. You should clear the top of the fence and land on the other side. You do constantly take damage, so you cannot stay here forever. Once out here, you can't go to the left as the gate and an invisible wall block you, so heading right is the only way. You can clip back and bounce through the fence to make sure you don't get too close to the edge. Using this trick, you can jump off the side and land back in areas, which is kind of useful. But make sure you land on something, because jumping into the abyss will kill you. Up next is a pretty useful trick in Rusty Bucket Bay. On the deck of the ship, find this ramp. On the side of it, go into a talent shot and jump at the last crack in the wall. Banjo will get suspended in air and then fall through to the inside of the ship. From here, there are two jiggies we can get a lot easier than normal. 
First is the one at the back with the rotor. You'll die immediately, so do this one first. Next, when swimming towards the back again, if you jump up near the upper left section, you should hit the loading zone for the boss boom box. And here's another trick you can do. As soon as you land in the battle, fire three eggs straight ahead. This will skip the cutscene which would cause the Jiggy to disappear. So now the Jiggy will be floating there for you to collect. You can now just leave the fight without even killing him. When inside the ship, make sure not to swim too low or you'll clip back in bounds. Before we move on, there's a trick you can do called the quick dive. When you're on a platform with water right below you, go into a talent trot. Run towards the edge and just as you're about to fall, let go of all the buttons on your controller. This will cause you to fall fast through the water. You can fall different distances depending on the timing, but it's a fun way to get underwater faster. A popular glitch and my personal favorite is the reverse B adventure. It allows you to take B banjo outside of Click Clock Wood into other areas. First you have to unlock Click Clock Wood and speak to Mumbo. Pay the 25 Mumbo tokens and you'll now be a bee. Fly out of the level and take the exit pad out. In the hub area there's a hidden tunnel. Going too far will cause Mumbo's transformation to wear off. In the tunnel there's also a sleeping cauldron which is important because if you already activated it you cannot do the glitch. So here's the hard part, you need to fly up and trigger the cauldron as Mumbo takes away your magic and forces you to land. When you're about here in the tunnel go sideways up the wall while holding B, mashing A and holding forward on the control stick. Move it to a slight up left angle, fly forward, and hopefully you'll make it far enough to wake up the cauldron. The transformation animation will start to play, but get interrupted by the cauldron cutscene. When that ends, you'll now be able to access a lot of places you normally couldn't. One of the cooler uses of the reverse B adventure is obtaining the ice key. Haha, <laughs> cooler, ice key. This key was supposed to be a stop and swap item, but since that feature was cancelled, the key is normally inaccessible without the use of cheats. But using this glitch, we can grab it as B Banjo. Head over to Freeze Easy Peak, but make sure to use the tunnel entrance because entering normally will cause you to lose your power up. Once in the world, fly to Wazo's cave. Fly up and out of bounds while going in the direction of the ice key room. Once inside, slowly fall down onto the ground and collect the ice key. Even though it's completely useless, it was pretty satisfying to finally collect it after failing to when I played this game as a kid. As for other uses, you can now explore worlds in ways you weren't supposed to. For example, I flew around in Clanker's Cavern, I went out of bounds, and came back in underwater. To my surprise, the water didn't have any effect on me as I was able to fly around during a time when I should have been swimming. If you're going to do any glitch in this video, I'd highly recommend this one as it's super versatile and just a great time. To finish off today's episode, this glitch allows you to skip the final door in Grunty's Lair. This skips having to collect 25 jiggies to fill a puzzle. However, this trick is pretty difficult, so here we go. Head up the stairs and nudge Bando into the corner. Perform a talent trot, face right, and zoom the camera all the way out. Now move it all the way to the right so it looks like this. Here's the hard part. Hold right on the control stick until you hear five kazooie noises. You should clip through the wall and you now have to tap jump and shift the control stick to up right. If you do this at the right time, you'll now be on the other side of the door. This may look easy, but I assure you it's not. This glitch is frame perfect and almost angle perfect too. That means that the jump has to be on the right 1 30th of a second. As for the angle of the control stick, there's a 2 degree leeway. With that being said, it took me a good 2 hours to finally pull this off, but it is worth it because you can now enter the final boss with Grunty early. When you land on the other side of the door, the floors and walls won't be rendered in, so just hop into the cauldron and beat the game. So that's gonna do for this episode of Game Breakers. If you enjoyed, drop a like and subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to Chrono Keys, who is a Banjo-Kazooie glitch hunter. They discovered a lot of the glitches covered in this video, so if you still want more Banjo glitches, check them out. But for now, I'm gonna get about here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, see ya!